respect the DJ because the DJ is the medium between the music and the people in any aspect, whether it's on the radio, whether it's in a party, on a mixtape, to the next degree of finding that next superstar. When it comes to being a DJ and when it comes to understanding and loving and respecting the art form and the craft of DJing, it's something that is very important to music, period. I look around sometimes like that. The amazing extra stuff that came with it. We all know the difference between when you go to a party and you have a great DJ and you have a trash DJ. You can't take that for granted. When you talk about hip hop DJs, there's no way my name won't come up in the conversation. To be arguably one of the most known mixtape DJs ever, you know, I think it's great. I can say arguably Gangsta Grills is probably one of the most consistent and strongest brands that have ever touched mixtapes. To know what projects that I've worked on mean to people. And I sit in a club like some people in there, honestly, I've kind of raised off tapes like Trap or Die and Dedication and my work with various artists. And it's about continuing that. I treat it like the league and every year you want to win that ring. Just because I had a great year last year doesn't mean that it's time to sit back and take off from next year. What's been very impactful and very important with Gangsta Grills and my brand is it's always been connected with something fresh, something new. That's what hip hop is about. One, two, three. DJ Drummer. One. One, two. Yeah. between going back and forth between my mother and my father. I feel like I grew up in rallies and marches and picket lines, you know, against the strikes and things of that nature. And my mom was an English teacher. She used to teach at high schools in Philadelphia. I learned early on my parents kept me very socially and consciously aware. I remember being into music from a young age. Both my parents had huge record collections. I went to go see Juice in the movie theater. And it changed my life. The character, DJ GQ watching him up there cutting and scratching was just so exciting the DJ battle at the time and I was like that looks fun I don't know if I would have chosen the career path that I had if it wasn't for going to see Juice Let's get it. I was on my way to high school and I convinced my mom to buy me a turntable and a mixer and I got a belt drive turntable and I used to like take my lunch money and not I wouldn't buy lunch I would go downtown after school, and I would just, I would go buy records. You know, I remember some of my first records I ever bought was Heavy D, I'm the Man, off the Who's the Man soundtrack. And the B-side of that actually was Party and Bullish by Big, Super Cat, Dolly My Babies, Ghetto Red Hot, Brand New Bean, Punk Shop Up to Get Beat Down. That was my era of really first buying vinyl. I remember doing my first party in ninth grade. I got paid $40 for the party, I had one crate of records. I went to Central High School in Philadelphia and at the subway stop, you know, that's where they used to pass out flyers. And, you know, my goal was just like, man, I gotta get my name on a flyer. Like, I gotta get my name on a flyer, you know. If I can get my name on a flyer, then, you know, that's it. I'm good, I've accomplished something. There was an emerging Philadelphia music scene at the time, various groups, and I was a youngster. I would sneak out and go to shows, and I really got to witness the roots get on. So for me, that was like, wow, like, you can really do this. And I made my first mixtape when I was in high school, and I used to sell out of my locker for like $4, and I would make a list of what was on it. So I started my DJ career in those days. DJ Drama! I got my name, interestingly enough. I had these two friends. One was named Hakeem and my man, Bakari. His name was Bakari Drame. He used to hustle mixtapes. Hakeem used to always call him Drama. And 
I was like, you know, that's hard, like, that's hot. You know, and I asked Bakari, I was like, yo, what are you, what are you doing? Like, are you really using that or are you just, you know, messing around? He was like, nah, you can have it. So he gave me the name DJ Drama. You know, it's so weird because through the years, I always felt like it would be so hard for me to be known as DJ Drama because drama is such a, a used word in, in everyone's vocabulary in so many ways. And nobody's ever gonna think about me as DJ Drama when they hear the word drama. And I, I would still go on and play with various names throughout my career, but DJ Drama is always the name that kind of stuck. Facts, you can look them up, it's all there. Fast forward a couple years, I wound up getting an academic scholarship to Clark Atlanta University. I met my friend DJ Sense, we met in, a, in our dorm. He had kind of already heard of me from just being around the Philly scenes. A year later, Don Cannon comes to Clark Atlanta University as well. And everybody tells him, you know, you gotta meet drama. And you know, he tracks me down and tells me he makes beats. And I actually wound up giving his beat tape a listen. I was like, oh, this kid's fired. There becomes the relationship between me, Cannon, and Sense, where we become best friends and comrades and before business partners, just DJs together. And the school years, you know, went great. We were probably some of the most popular DJs at school. The most important class that I took in college was definitely marketing. You know, I think about everything that I was doing at the time, and it was pretty much marketing. I remember putting my own business plans together. I used to murder Kinko's, you know, when we had to make our own covers. And when I got out of school, I was like, well, I'm, I'm gonna try to do this thing on my own. After college, when I got out, one of the first people I met was T.I. T. I put a business plan together. I got me a lawyer. I started a little company at the time, and I was making mixtapes and, you know, going to various colleges and setting up. You know, I would go to the schools. I would go to my school, CAU, go to Georgia State, have a table with all the mixtapes. And they'd be like, you know, like, who's DJ Drama? I never heard of him. And I'd be like, man, I don't know. I just worked for him. He told me to be here, you know. I just would get on my hustle. I've had a couple of I made it moments. I definitely could say like when we got raided in 2007, and I say we, I'm talking about affiliates and myself, Don Cannon and, and DJ Sense. It shocked the world at the time. We got hit with the Rico, which is what they hit crime bosses with, you know what I'm saying? Here I was making music and doing mixtapes and working with your favorite artists, and you know, they didn't find nothing but mixtapes. But I just remembered the reaction from people after that. Doughboy Magazine, a couple months before that, had came to me and asked me to do them somewhat of a favor and I was like well you know can I get a cover and they were like you know we don't put DJs on the cover of Billboard after I got raided you know they, they came to me like so if you give us the exclusive you know we'll give you the cover so hence I wound up on the cover of Billboard magazine I feel like a phoenix arose from that you know what I'm saying and the raid kind of put me in the, the hip-hop history books faster than I knew I was going <laughs> If it wasn't for the mixtape in itself, I wouldn't be here. The part that I played in so many careers and, and what mixtapes have become and how influential they are to the artists, to the DJ, to the culture, you know, it's just, it's everything. Mixtape culture was always very fascinating for me more than anything outside of the DJ culture because I was watching how big Clue was, how large Flex was getting and cars were driving by and you would hear Clue's drops and it meant more than being on the radio or being at a party because the mixtape, it traveled. Mixtapes for me started out as a hobby, as something I just love to do. My man Emperor Cersei, Birthday Bash, Hot 1079, we had a great relationship. Sense was working up there and Cersei would say, yo, I'm gonna give you guys the opportunity to have a booth at Birthday Bash to hustle your mixtapes. I was like, okay, cool. I was like, all right, I gotta have a South tape. I was like, okay, I need a new name for it. Thinking in my head and gangsta, 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 gang, gangsta grills. And Sense was like, yeah, that sounds cool. I was like, all right, let's, let's call it Gangsta Grills. So that was how Gangsta Grills was born. So we made the first Gangsta Grills tape. It was a dud. <laughs> but you know the title stuck with me so I went on to do it and I, it was it became a niche and so I focused on the south they probably not ready for this let's call this fight night I realized at the time the new thing in mixtapes was to get a host 
So I asked three people if they would host the tape. The one who said yes was Little John, and he was the first host of Gangsta Grills. That's hence how the Gangsta Grills drop was born, you know, because of Little John. Gangsta Grills! Gangsta Grills started to pick up. My man, Coach K, he has this artist named Young Jeezy. He said, listen, I have this vision. I want you to be a part of it. Our first tape was called Streets is Watching. I just never forget the feeling and the buzz from that project. And at the time, it pretty much changed my life. I mean, I went on to make tapes with Chris Brown, R. Kelly, Fab, Mill, 2 Chains. I did a mixtape with Pharrell. Like, who can say that? I've worked with Outkast. I've done records with Drake, Gucci Man, you name it, Jeremiah. Anybody that's at the top of the echelon or the upper echelon of hip hop in some form or some way has been connected to the mixtape and the mixtape in some form or fashion is connected to the DJ. Wait for it. Let's go. For me to step it up a notch was also about going on to making records. About to pull up uh, Main Street Studios. It's where the magic happens day to day. Investing into myself and my businesses is the key to life. Make investments in various places. You gotta be smart about it. It's nothing like home. It's nothing like home. Generation Now is the name of my record label. Atlantic Records is where I have my consulting deal. Drama Like the DJ, Mean Street Studios. Mean Street Studios has it's, it's become a place that is just very central to Atlanta and, and the sound and, and the vibe. I mean, you know, there's not anybody that won't tell you that. Right now, Mean Street Studios is probably the hottest studio in Atlanta and it's something we built from the ground up. So running the studio is one thing. Most importantly, it's about, you know, who comes to the studio. Better to show you than to tell you. This is what we call the wall of fame. My man Jeremiah, Ty Dolla Sign, T.I., Ludacris, Lil Wayne, 2 Chains, Lonely Island, and the cast of SNL, Jermaine Dupri, Metro Boomin, A-Track, Young Jeezy, Matthew Modine, one of my favorite movies, Full Metal Jacket, Meek Mill, Nicki Minaj, Wiz Khalifa, shout out to my man 50 Cent, Missy Elliott was just here the other day, Future, Usher, just to name a few, just, <laughs> I'm just saying. So, you know, we had a vision, we had an idea, we executed, you know, and it started room to room. And then, you know, this is the lounge space, we got a pool table, let's go into the studio. Classic plaque, my man Young Jeezy, it's so legendary, great album, T.I., my man Future over here, so that's where the magic happens. Oh, I originally started with our radio room. 888, Shade 45, let's go, Revolt, what's up? You know, we have three studios, we have a psych wall, we have a radio room, we have an, an amazing lounge. A lot of bangers happen in here. We have an amazing staff. Say what's up, gentlemen. What's good? What's up? Atlantic Records helped me build the studio to its fullest capacity. Generation now. That's the future, that's the company, you know, Generation Now. I've started a company called Generation Now. I have artists on our label that it's really exciting to see them grow and to watch them get deals. I'm a boss. I look at myself as somebody that works for myself day in and day out, as well as I have other people that give me paychecks. Work. And Little Uzi, as his own entity, in a sense, was an investment. Another day at all to watch him be part of the next generation of superstars of our culture. It's a special film. A lot of people just see the club stuff. They think we just work for like two hours. They work for like 26 hours a day. Video shoot, Cloudy Street album, volume two. It's gonna be a good one. You know, put a record out with Chris Brown, Scheme, McQuinn, two other artists that I signed. Scheme from Inglewood, California, McQuinn from DC area, and we, we all know who Chris Brown is. So. That's Scheme, by the way, right there. Scheme. What are you talking about? I'm just explaining, like, my, you know, how long I've been in the music business. So. Ish. How long is that? Maybe about like. 10 years professionally. Like, well, Gangsta Girls started, like, started probably like 03, 04. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah like, 15 like, years old when y'all came with Tip. With Tip, yeah, that's, that's what I was telling them it started with Tip, so. Fun facts. And action. Yeah, y'all don't have to be quiet when y'all come in. Y'all can really talk, talk to them. to him. Don't put his feet off hands on the table. Don't feet off move, y'all know, feet off and rest. 
I gotta wear a lot of hats, and I'm used to that. It's something that I do quite well, you know what I'm saying? Going from, you know, being a DJ and just spinning records to being an executive, a manager, an artist. You know, just stay focused. You just wanna set it up in there, but take it into the bedroom. Right. Perfect. All right, that's hot. This is Chris by himself. Yep, exactly. Perfect. My man Fifth is here. About to go shoot his scenes, cameo. They're gonna do all of us, and they won't bring you in after that. So okay. you come into the lineup after the performance, and say. Would you rob Barney's? Let me see my money. Thank you. You know, and the record was a change of pace for me. The feedback's been great. The charts have been great. You know, the video's amazing. Every step of the way for me, it feels like creating new heights. Yeah, what you see, we here, baby. <laughs> You know, you, you get to you get to get your people excited from uh, what's up, man. And watch what happens when you say, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Everybody gets excited for that. Well, put CB on the phone. Yeah. Hey, I'm trying to find you the baddest thing out here for tomorrow. All right, I'm with it. I mean, we're gonna turn up though. That shit gonna be crazy. Come meet me a towel. I know a lot of people. I've known a lot of people for quite some time. I've known Chris Brown since he was 16 when he first came out with his first record, you know, and I was with him in Philly when he went to like, Power 99. And the first time I, I saw the response and reaction, the girls was calling up the radio station, you know, to talk to him. I was like, oh, this, this guy's gonna be a star, you know, so. I've seen enormous amounts of money in my time, more than I could have ever imagined, especially coming from a middle-class background for myself. And it's important to understand that, especially in the music business and what we're doing, tomorrow is never promised. In any business or anything you do, especially when you're in a situation where you work for yourself, when you get there, it's like, okay, how do you stay here? How do you stay relevant? How do you stay, you know, in the mix? <laughs> You know, especially for myself, I have kids. You know, so I have to think about their future. This one baby's dancing a candy girl. Shout out to New Edition. Spent my day at the dance recital. Yeah. They see a lot of the sacrifices that I make, but they also see my dedication and see how focused daddy is on, on what he does. What's up, baby? Hey. We're shooting a video. Where are you? LA. Back. This weekend? I hope to be able to pass along a lot of what I build to them if it's something they're interested in. Okay. All right, love you, baby. Love you. Bye-bye. And also disciplining them to understand why their father works so hard. She's one of the dramats. <laughs> in the process of getting her hair done. Chick-fil-A money. Yes. There you go. See you in a little bit. It's just about them seeing me being an influence in their life of someone who puts a lot of hard work into what he believes in and being able to have them enjoy the fruits of that labor. Draw at one, draw at two. In 2012, I won the first DJ of the Year Global Spin Award, which was quite the humbling moment. This award right here, this, this meant the world to me. You know, it was an honor to be in a room of my peers and, you know, guys that I grew up aspiring to be like and listening to and legends and OGs that I had I'd never met before to come into that room and get the first ever DJ of the Year Global Spin Award. Like, you know, that was, that was monumental. Like, that was, that was legendary, you know, that was big. And I don't take that lightly, you know. And I won a lot of awards, you know. One of them being Best Mixtape of the Year from the BT Hip Hop Awards. I have about six Just Do Mixtape Awards, Best Mixtape DJ. But, you know, Global Spin Awards was a concept and idea that was created, you know, for the DJs, you know, specifically. So that was big. As of now, I have nine Global Spin Awards. DJ Drama! I didn't think I was gonna win this one because everybody in this category really does their thing. Shout out to my ATL family. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. 
but I, I'm still here. I'm still in the league. I'm still playing, so I'm going to try to stay ahead of the pack. You know, for me, it's a blessing to think that I have the most awards. I mean, it's it's quite the statement. It makes me strive to work harder. I'm going to keep having the most global spin awards. If I'm ahead of the pack now, I'm watch what comes next. <laughs> Next for DJ Drama, I'm just, you know, I'm in a great space. I'm putting a new album out. Got one of the hottest artists in the game out. Mean Street Studio is buzzing. I got one of the biggest tours of the summer coming up with Wiz Khalifa, Snoop. It's my, you know, third year going out on tour. It's just the top, you know what I'm saying? For me, it's like, I'm really excited about what tomorrow holds and creating more superstars in the game. And, you know, we aspire. It's about putting plaques on these walls, you know what I'm saying? putting hits up and moving the culture forward. I will always and forever be a part of hip hop history. I've been called an elder statesman and I still feel young as hell. And I aspire to, to you know, be on that Forbes list next to Hov, next to Puff, next to Birdman, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what we all aspire to. And to be able to do it out of what we love, out of passion and make quality music and continue to give for the culture. You know, I'm, I'm becoming very comfortable in executive position. Being able to empower more people, becoming a boss in a broader way. Being able to kick my feet up and make a lot of decisions, you know, from right here in this room. Watching her fine sand, walked to my bedroom and thought to myself, that's the shape of things to come. She said, Why in the club? You don't make it precipitate, you know, make it rain when you can make it thunderstorm. I'm like, Why? The world needs sun, the hood needs fun. So there's a war going on, and half the battle is guns. How dare I throw it on the floor when people are poor? So I write like Edgar Allen to restore. Got a cord, umbilical attached to a place that can't afford no landscaping or window draping. This old lady told me if I I ain't got nothing good, say Nathan. That's why I don't talk much. I swear it don't cost much to pay attention to me. I tell it like it is, then I tell it how it could be. The hood be requesting my services. Oh, don't get nervous. It's step your game up.